Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about the realistic, uh, what happened with the reserve list and the bubble has burst. And I actually bought in the height of the bubble and that's not good. Uh, that's definitely very, very bad. So I bought in beta cards um, and not power nine, but reserve list cards uh, during in summertime. And now it is around holidays. Of course, the bubble just collapsed completely. And it is cards like Diamond Valley, Power Artifact, uh, even the dual lands are stabilizing. The dual lands are far more stable than the other two, but they're also beta bolts and things of that nature have absolutely collapsed in price. But it's okay because part of the collection, and that was the collection I was most ex that was the part of the collection I was most excited to buy. But in terms of actually what is going up in price, it would be the pioneer cards. It would be the supreme verdicts, the abrupt decays, the doxies. So all in all, it did balance out. But if you were alpha investment and you were buying lots and lots of these older cards, you might be in a little bit of trouble. If you were selling Pioneer to buy reserve lists, that's actually the reverse of what happened financially. You should have been so selling the reserve list to be buying into Pioneer at the time when Pioneer was at all time lows. So in the end, it's magic and it always will balance itself out. And it's always good to have these cards to enjoy in your EDH deck as well. Like Black Border Demonic Tutor, I think will always be a great card, uh, even if today's price doesn't show that because people want it. But e a lot of the um, beta cards at the time were far more overvalued, I feel like. Like I bought a flash fire for an insane amount of money just because it's an uncommon from beta. But now that you look at it, it's like, oh yeah, it really isn't worth that much money because who is going to really play this card? So lesson learned. So I did buy a lot of the uh, vintage cards at the peak of the market, which was around July. And now obviously I cannot sell them because I've lost uh, some of them 50% or more. And that is really alarming. Like even cards that I didn't expect to lose money uh, have lost a lot of money, at least according to MTG stocks um, and TCG player. And they continue to plummet. Uh, so they're continuing to plummet in price, which is quite fascinating, at, at least for me. Um, I don't know. I think there was a bubble. It should have readjusted. It's always hard to see a bubble. I am very glad, however, that I, you know, I am very glad that before the bubble, I didn't buy so much into the bubble. I did buy into the bubble, but it could have been far worse than it. It could have been far worse because at the time, if you wanted to sell me these cards, I would have been really happy to buy unlimited or beta like for instance, uh, a unlimited Wheel of Fortune went from July 1st, it went from $450 to today, $210. The unlimited Wheel of Fortune, um, which is surprising, but also, is it really surprising? Revised went from, let's see, Revised went from $99, almost, uh, let's call it $100, to $80, $75. Wow. Okay, let me click on this link. Is there actually, a, yep. No, uh, damage goes for $56. $75 is near mint, I believe. Or, um, yep, uh, $75. Yep, $75 is the first light play, which mine is. So you are looking at even the um, graph on the graph on Wheel of Fortune on MTG stocks has not sufficiently seen the shown the decline of these older reserve list cards. It's pretty bad. I don't think anyone is going to say that this is good for the game, but nonetheless, you can get 
cards much cheaper now than before. I just wish I didn't invest during the hype of the thing. And very few channels will tell you that. Like very few channels will even like discuss this, but I feel like there is a video on my channel already about what I bought into and the type of stuff that I was really excited to buy into. It's just a hold right now. But yeah, I, I have lost on, on the vintage cards, I've lost 40 to 50% on every card basically. And there is no recovery. The only good thing about buying that collection is I also got a lot of, luckily for, I mean, it, it sounds like hilarious when I say this, because at the time I, will, I bought the collection just for the beta cards or the reserve list cards. And now it's kind of like, oh, well, it turned out all this other junky stuff that I really didn't care about that I was actually not happy to buy part of the collection is now the stuff that's tripled or quadrupled in price. Uh, one being Supreme Verdict, Abrupt Decay, Doxies. Um, a lot of these like piles, you know, like obviously the main pile was the beta cards, right? Um, or the the the, vent, the reserve, the, the higher end stuff. But now I look at it and I say to myself, oh my gosh, it's like this random other stuff that has just uh, skyrocketed in price. Hmm. I guess you never know, and that's the beauty of MTG Finance is, man, it has been, it's been pretty brutal. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Sometimes it's better, it's better to be lucky than to be good, because if I had been, you know, investing the way I wanted to, I would only invest in the beta, and we're talking about July, I would have only invested in the beta and the vintage and that was like i was real hyped into that that was the highest point they've ever been at and then since that point they have just utterly collapsed and they're collapsing each and every day and i don't think uh, there is a recovery point uh, alpha investments made a video on this i don't think there is a floor right now the floor will be a new floor come january or february because Again, it does make sense to me. So I can't say it doesn't make sense. It does make sense. Why would someone need a flash fire from beta? Like who, how many people are playing that? Like nobody, right? Why would anyone need a tsunami from beta? Or a dark ritual even from beta? Like Demonic Tutor kind of makes sense because it's EDH. But a lot of the other stuff like Power Artifact, Diamond Valley, uh, LED... Man, it's been a slaughter fest. Um, let me look at one of my favorite cards to look at, Moat, and see what happened with Moat. Oh, because um, Moat was the card that one dude bought out. Um, and he, well, Moat is actually doing pretty good. Well, 569. No, Moat has dropped to, Moat went from July 1st, 800 to 700. So it's dropped a little bit in price. Yeah, I mean, luckily I was not holding power, so I I would definitely say that I am very happy that I did not buy into power because I was looking to buy into power, and power by far as a percentage is probably the worst, or not as a money, as a um, amount of money because you're putting so much money in one card, if that card does not go up, yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. Cratering by prices. Yeah, party is over. The dream is nearly dead. Uh, there, There's no... Oh, ABU Games. Maybe that's what ABU Games did. Uh, a lot of the prices are dropping like crazy. Yeah, the spread. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, there's 82% spread, so... What Card Kingdom sells it for is not necessarily what um, people would buy it for. And I'm looking at these graphs and it tells me that we're not done at all. Um, we're not done in the least bit. It's quite fascinating, actually, when I'm looking at these graphs. It, it looks like a complete decline down and I don't really... 
see it. Like a card like Jihad from Arabian Nights went from a lot of money to like very little. Let's see, um, July 1st. Oh yeah, July 1st was definitely in the... <laughs> oh gosh, no. Uh, retail was 449, buy list was 180. Today, the card is retail is 189 and buy list is 70. And then um, Alpha Juggernaut is a good example too. On July 1st, it was, oh wow. Uh, July 1st, it was uh, $812 retail, 304 buy list. And then now it is 198 buy list, 505 retail. Yikes. Um, no, it's actually lower. It's uh, 178 and continuing to go down. And that is primarily every alpha card. Definitely fascinating. Just uh, absolutely soul crushing on this. If you invested in vintage or whatever, when I invested in it, you got butchered. Like just mad loss of value. And I'm not happy to see this, but I'm also, you know, I dodged a bullet by not buying that Black Lotus. I definitely dodged a bullet not buying Black Lotus or Mock Sapphire. Uh, however, yeah, it sucks that these cards have just shattered in price, though. Bye, guys.